Okay, Assalamualaikum. Um, right, so for our previous lesson, we have done with this elementary problems. We want to find the extremum of the functional where we just use this theorem of Euler's. Right, so the, let's just recall back. So this is uh, a theorem that you're going to use in order to find the extremum of a functional. So this is the necessary condition for an extremum. Okay, and then we have the Bernstein theorem where we just want to check whether that functional has a unique extremum or more than one extremum. Okay, then we are going to proceed with the variation cases of the extremum where f does not depend on y prime. We have f is linearly depends on y prime. And we have f depends only on y prime. Here also we have f does not depend on y. We just have f x y prime here. Okay, here we have f only on fy prime then for the first one here we have f does not depend on of uh, y prime we just have f in terms of x and y only okay so for your information whatever it is whatever form of this f is we just only focusing on the Euler's theorem so for the last one here, f does not depend explicitly on x. We just have y and y prime. So remember, in order to find the extremum where we have cases of multiple cases here, does not depend on y, does not depend on x, y only, y prime only. But our main condition in order to find the extremum is to focusing on this Euler's theorem. Okay, so let's do the example of this one. Alright, so as you can see here, we want to find the extremum of the following functionals. Alright, so let's take a look at the first one here. Your functional here, x plus 2y minus, f minus y squared. So your f here is only cons consists of x and y. It does not depend on y prime. So for this case, it has x y and y prime but whatever condition of f here we only focusing on the Euler's theorem where by using Euler's in order to find the extremal of the functional it is given by f y minus derivative of x of f y prime equals to zero and remember also we need to fulfill the boundary condition here okay which satisfies the condition one where one here is the boundary condition given all right so let's take a look at the example here okay so now we are going to find the extremal the first one here all right so given j Functional yx is integrate from 0, 0, x plus 2y minus y squared, integrate with respect to x. So this is actually point x, point y, this is point x, point y. Alright, so by using Euler's, we have f here, consists of x and y equals to x plus 2y minus y squared. Then by Euler, we need to have Fy and Fy prime. Okay, so for this case, your Fy is 2 minus 2y. And your Fy prime is 0 because there is no y prime here in your function. So by Euler, by using Euler of Fy minus derivative of x of Fy prime, we substitute here of Fy 2 minus 2y minus derivative of fy prime which is 0 equals to 0. Okay, so here we have 0, right? And then what's left is 2 minus 2y equals to 0. And then from here, 2y is equals to 2 and y equals to 1. So this is the extremal of the functional but can this extremum 
be attained on the function given. Okay, alright. First is to fulfill the Euler's equation. Second condition is to fulfill the boundary condition. So now let's take a look at the boundary condition here. When x equals to 0, y should equal to 0. When x equals to 1, y should equal to 1. But now your extremal from the given function here is only y equals to 1. There is no x. Alright, there is no variation of values also. So, means that this extremum cannot be attained on the given functional. Alright? Okay? Why? Because why? Why it cannot be attained on the given functional? Because this boundary condition is not fulfilled by the given extremum of y equals to 1. So, we cannot use this as the extremum of the functional j here. Alright, now let's take a look at the second one. We have a functional in terms of x, y and y prime. So, whatever types of function is, the key point here is to focusing on this Euler's theorem. So, from this Euler's theorem, we need to have our Fy. Okay, so you are given a function of x plus y plus 2y prime. So, your Fy here equals to 1. And your Fy prime here is equals to 2. So, by Euler, you have Fy minus derivative of x of f y prime equals to 0. Now substitute here 1 minus derivative of x 2 equals to 0. So here, what you can see, differentiate a constant will get you a 0. So from the left hand side here equals to 1. But the right hand side here equals to 0. Right, so it is not meet the condition where 1 is not equals to 0. So from this case, the Euler equation itself is not fulfilled. So we cannot find the extremum of this functional by using this Euler. Okay, so as... Uh, what can I conclude here is, from here, from the multiple types of functional here, sorry, function here, whatever cases of f, which is does not depend on y prime, only have y prime and so on, the focus part is to uh, make sure that the Euler's equation and the boundary condition is fulfilled in order to find the extremum of a Functional. All right. All right. So our next topic here is on variational problems in parametric form. So we have discussed with the previous topics with x and y. So now let's focusing on this parametric form. We have in terms of t. The parametric form should be in terms of t. So let's see the definition here. Okay. This parametric form is in terms of t, alright? Okay, so in a number of problems, it is more convenient and sometimes simply necessary to make use of a parametric representation of the curve. So we present x in terms of t, y in terms of t. Then our functional will be in terms of, instead of x, y, and y prime previously, now it is in terms of t, y x y x dot y dot now the different the differential now is in terms of t here with respect to t okay where x dot here is the x dt and y dot here equals to dy dt all right let's take a look at this example we want to find the extremals of the functional of j equals to integral of 0, 0 to x1 and y1. Okay, so we have here y squared, y prime squared dx. Alright, so we need to have this x in terms of t and y in terms of t here. <clears throat> so now from here, we need to let 
x equals to xt and y equals to yt where x dot equals to the x dt and y dot equals to dy dt so substitute this information to the given functional so now we have we know that y prime is dy dx so this dy dx by using a chain rule it is equals to dy dt times dt dx so now this dy dt is actually is a y dot and dt dx is 1 over what x dot so we can write that y prime is equals to y dot over x dot all right so substituting to the given functional here we will have y squared y will remain as y squared now y prime is y dot over dot square of x dot dt why because this dx is actually comes from the dx dt so x dot equals to dx dt so dx is x dot dt so answering to this you substitute y square remain y square y prime is y dot x dot square x dot dt so now we have the parametric form of uh, functional here in terms of integral from y squared y dot x dot squared x dot dt okay let's take a look at the definition so we have to uh, we have an assumption of x equals to xt and y equals to yt okay so we have a functional now in terms of t x y or x dot and y dot with respect to t okay where the x dt and dy dt is x dot and y dot respectively so now looking at this information in order that the values of the functional should depend on the curve and not on x parameter parameterization it is necessary and sufficient that the integral not contain explicitly the parameter t so this integral not contain explicitly the parameter t as you can see from the functional from the new form of this functional after you substitute the parametric form there is no t variable means it is not contained explicitly the parameter t so no t so it is uh, that t is not contained explicitly the parameter t that it be positive homogeneous of first order so we have complete with the first assumption now your functional is in terms of um so this is the first assumption x equals to xt y equals to yt then your functional in terms of xt y x dot y dot with respect to t and then we make sure that there is no explicit parameter t in the functional and that it be positive homogeneous of first order in the arguments of x dot and y dot and then another one we should check whether that is there ft such that of this homogeneous of first degree here is that f t x y k x dot k y dot is equals to k f t x y x dot y dot. So from this example, you know that that your f here is equals to okay your f t x y x dot y dot is equals to y square y dot square over x dot square okay now let's say if we have f t x y k x dot k y dot so your function should be y square k y dot square uh, k x dot square so simplifying this you have y squared, k squared, y dot squared, k, sorry, this is not squared, k 
Okay, so we just have kx dot here. Okay, simplifying this, you get ky squared y dot squared over x dot. Okay, so this is kf txy x dot y dot. Answering to this, f txy kx dot y dot is equals to kf txy x dot y dot. Okay, okay, so now we have fulfilled this one, two, three, four conditions, then the extremal of the functional JC now satisfy the Euler equation of fx minus dt d dt fx dot equals to zero and fy minus d over dt fy dot equals to zero. So these equation are consequences to each other means that no need to fulfill both. We just need to choose one so that once it is fulfilled then that the other one also get fulfilled. Okay. So, this is the fifth condition of the parametric form. So, the first one, we let x equals to in terms of t, y equals to function in terms of t. And then, we convert by substitution, by replacement of these variables here with x equals to xt, y equals to yt, x dot equals to the x dt y dot equals to the y dt now, the original functional becomes y squared y dot x dot squared x dot dt. So from here, you can simplify this and then to get this one, then from here you can check either that f t x y k x dot k y dot is equals to k f t x y x dot y dot. Once they are equal, then it be positive homogeneous of first degree in the arguments of x dot and y dot. Then the extremal of the functional JC satisfy the Euler equations of this. And you need to know that this, both of these equations are consequence to each other than you just only to fulfill one of these two. Okay. So how can we check whether there is an extremal of this functional JC by using this Euler equation. Okay, so in a parametric form, we have the functional of JC, right? In order to distinguish this JC with J. So that JC here equals to what we did previously, y dot square x dot dt. Okay, actually we have here x dot, but we just eliminate them by simplify the expression. So now your f is consists of t x y x dot y dot now equals to y squared y dot squared over x dot. So by order, we just need to choose which one. Which Euler that you want to test here? X dot, fx minus d dt fx dot equals to zero. And fy minus d dt fy dot equals to zero. So from here, you can see that from the given function here, there is no x. So you know that if there is no x, then fx should equal to 0. So we choose this Euler's equation because it is easier compared to the previous one of fy. Then from here, you know that if negative dt fx dot equals to 0, we know that this dt fx equals to 0, then this fx dot should be a constant okay so solving this all right okay we have here um, fx equals to zero fx dot equals to 
um, differentiate here with respect to t of y squared, y dot squared, x dot minus 1. So f x dot should be this is constant y squared y dot squared x dot minus 2 this is minus here so fx dot equals to negative y squared y dot squared over 2 is there any squared here I think yes y squared so this is your fx dot then from here this negative y squared y dot over 2 equals to a and putting negative to the right hand side you have y squared y dot over 2 equals to a because this is a constant oh sorry here we have x dot squared x dot squared okay so now we have y square y dot square over x dot square equals to a by putting the negative here to the right hand side still negative a is another constant so we just have a here all right so now we have y square y dot x dot square equals to a so y y dot x dot equals to square root of a and this can this square root of a is another constant we just can write as b so y y dot x dot equals to b so in order to find the extremal we just need to solve this where this y dot x dot remember y dot x dot is y prime so y prime is dy dx then we have here y dy dx equals to v okay so this is a separable differential equation we just have y dy equals to b dx solving them integrate one by one you will have y equals to bx plus c okay so in order to find the particular solution of this we need to apply the condition given here zero zero of x1 x1 okay so from here you just apply the boundary condition of this okay so applying the sec the boundary condition given where the boundary condition given here when x equals to zero y equals to zero and when x equals to x1 y equals to y1 so applying to this y bx plus c when x equals to zero y equals zero then okay for zero zero here c equals to zero then applying when x equals to x1 y equals to y1 then we will have b equals to y1 over x1 so our extremal from this equals to y equals to y1 x1 times x plus 0 which give us y equals to y1 x over x1 so this is the extremal of the functional y squared y prime squared dx right okay so from this example okay as we can see here we want to find the extremal so that is the extremal okay now we what we are doing just now is um from this example let's say let's take a look at this example okay you have a functional given 
what we are doing just now we we have done with writing ts the parameter transform the functional into experimetric okay done already we just need to assume x equals to xd y equals to yt x dot is dx dt y dot is dy dt so once you transform to the parametric representation you can show that fx y x dot is a positive homogeneous how by using that f t x y k x dot y sorry k y dot equals to k f t x y k x dot sorry there is no k here x dot y dot all right okay once we have done with showing x positivity of the homogeneous here, then we can find the extremal by solving each of, uh, sorry, one of these two equations. But for this example, it is shown that you are going to use fy minus dt dy fy dot equals to zero. Solving this, you will get the extremal of this functional. Okay. You can try this by your own. Alright, then the last one. If the functional is geodesic distance between the points A and B, calculate the shortest geodesic distance. So how can we calculate? Alright, so in our previous question, here we have done with finding the extremal. So that extremal will give you the minimum point, the shortest point, the shortest distance. So we are going to apply this point here to the extremal that you obtain in our third question. Alright, so I think the answer is 7.279, something like that. So you can try. Alright, so we have done with this elementary problem in calculus of variation. Alright, okay. So, okay, try this by your own. Later you can check. Thank you everyone.